Good morning. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. The mini microphone is back because it was a huge success last time. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I got into med school fresh out of high school. Basically, I got into med school through a BSMD program, which we're going to get a little bit more into detail later on. Basically, I'm making this video because not enough people know about these programs and they are very difficult to get into. But I feel like I feel like more people should be aware of it because it is such a good opportunity. I myself wasn't very much aware of it until a friend told me and lo and behold, here we are. I think that the best way to start is by explaining what a BSMD program is. This program is a combined Bachelor of Science and Doctor of Medicine degree. Instead of taking the traditional path to medical school, which is undergrad, the MCAT, and applying to medical school, you are just guaranteed a spot at a certain university's medical school just immediately after undergrad. Of course, certain programs do have criteria like maintaining a certain GPA and having a minimum MCAT score. These criteria are a lot more flexible than most people are shooting for when they are applying to medical school. Because if you really think about it, med school is extremely competitive. You want the best you can get. But in these programs, not only do you have the flexibility to not have to grind every single day of the week, you also can do so much more. Like you could do research, you could do study abroad because you don't have to focus on your grades as much. Obviously, I would recommend it. But realistically, you can't be at your desk 24-7. You have more time to explore extracurriculars, join clubs, other than having to stress about maintaining your GPA and getting the best MCAT score. The flexibility of this program is really a game changer because you can do so much more beyond just studying and keeping up your grades, which is what drew me to it personally. So how do you get into this program? Because as I mentioned, it's very, very competitive. And for me, I didn't think I was going to make it at all. The program I applied to has roughly a 5 to 10% acceptance rate every year. And that in itself had me sweating. And mind you, I'm not a straight A student. My GPA and SAT scores are actually the bare minimum that they kind of are looking for in the range of students that apply for their program. What I'm saying is you don't need the best grades. You don't need to be sitting down at your desk studying, trying to get straight A's for every class in high school. During my college application process, I noticed that a lot more schools are looking for what a kid does outside of school. And I can do a whole other video on that in the college application process because me personally, I applied to 19 different colleges and I was... I was done. I was burnt out for three months after. I have a lot to share about it. So how did I get to my position and where I am now? It all starts with a good foundation in high school. So I strategically chose my classes in high school so that they would make me shine. They would make me stand out. And how I did that was I began to take honors classes early on. I began to take AP classes in my junior year. I took a total of five honors classes and seven AP classes, which is not the norm at the high school I went to. A lot of the kids I was around were taking like seven APs per year, which is fine. It's just, like I said, I want to live my life a little bit too outside of academics. I'm sure a lot of people want to as well. Depending on what kind of person you are, seven AP classes might be a lot or they might be not many at all. Seven AP classes might be cake for you it was the right amount of stress for my academic life here's the breakdown junior year i took ap psychology score to five ap chemistry scored a four ap english language and composition scored a three and this past senior year i took ap physics one ap biology ap calculus ab and ap english literature and composition which are still scores are still coming for those honestly i don't really know how i did but i think i i think i passed as you can see the scores for the ones i did have are not the strongest yes there's a five in there but if you have taken ap psychology it's cake i'm not i'm not albert einstein i'm not a genius i'm just here to encourage anybody to apply to these programs it doesn't matter how difficult they are you really don't know what's gonna happen but these classes did give me a very good solid foundation of what i am to be expecting in pre-med in medical school because a lot of the content i learned in ap chemistry ap biology ap physics will appear on the mcat and at my school these ap classes do give us a gpa boost which helped a lot with my gpa which ended up being a 4.1 weighted i know different schools have different gpas but it was a 3.7 unweighted i might receive different reactions on these gpas but when i applied 
to the BSMD program that I'm in right now. I think the average unweighted GPA was between a 3.9 and a 4. In addition to the AP classes that I took, I did take five honors classes and these honor classes included for the most part science and math starting my freshman year that would prepare me for the workload of AP classes and even the workload of undergrad and college. So now we're going to discuss my extracurriculars which is I think where I was able to shine because I am a strong academic student but I'm even stronger in my extracurriculars because I'm very curious about the world around. Here are some of the key extracurriculars that I participated in from my freshman year to my senior year of high school. I participated in various internships. Four of the internships I participated in were international, three in Nigeria and one in Brazil. Two of those internships were public health internships. One was an OBGYN high risk hospital experience and the other one was a business and advocacy internship. Additionally, I attended various summer camps. One of them, I learned to do stitches. I learned to identify major bones. I learned to do just like basic little medical things that are core of undergrad. And let me know if you guys want these specific programs and I will make a video on those. I just would have to communicate with them to make sure that that's fine. And my number one thing that I talked about in all my essays pretty much, and I wrote 50 pages worth of college essays and supplementals, is working in the ambulance and being an EMT, which I actually have a whole video about. And if you'd like to watch that video, I'll have it up here and down below too. This role was invaluable. It really, really helps me develop my communication skills, which was wonderful when it came to the interviews I had to do during college applications. It also helped demonstrate my maturity towards medicine and also that I was involving myself at such a young age. All of these experiences combined really did help me confirm that I wanted to go into medicine because you could do all of these internships and you could do all of these things. You could be a wonderful student in high school, but if you refuse to acknowledge that you don't want to be a doctor then the eight years you're going to be stuck in college isn't worth it there's a lot of other paths and i think there's a lot of pressure for young adults to become doctors and work in the medical field nowadays but at the end of the day it's what works for you apart from internships and shadowing and summer camps i also spent around 50 hours volunteering for local events at my city these were events like games and garden events at our city park, which were really fun and it helped me be exposed to a different population that I'm used to. I don't necessarily live in the city, but I live close to it. So when I do go to the city, I'm exposed to a much larger group of people, which helped me develop my language skills in Spanish, for example. And I was able to highlight that in my college applications. I was also able to highlight that in my interview, which was super special for them. I'll talk a little bit more about the interview later. In addition to all of these experiences that I had during the summer and during the school year, I also did leave high school with three different credentials added to the end of my name, which is fancy or whatever. I actually worked so hard for them and I would recommend anybody to start gaining credentials behind your name. One of those credentials is EMT. As I stated, I worked in the ambulance also in my other video. The other credential is lifeguard. After I got EMS certified, I was like, might as well do it on C2. And my most recent credential is PES which stands for performance enhancement specialist kind of like a personal trainer but for sports once again these certifications demonstrated my commitment to healthcare and helping others I did do a lot of volunteer service in my area apart from that my total community service hours that I had leaving high school were 388 hours of community service I promise I have a life and I promise I'm not a high school sweat. This literally just happened because I got myself stuck in so many summer camps, so many internships that I genuinely liked. If you're trying to go into medical school, you don't have to do everything medicine related. It is recommended because they like to see a cohesive resume, but you can test different things out and you could just be like, oh, this confirmed that I don't want to do this and I actually do want to go into medicine. As long as you have a really good explanation for everything you do, then go ahead and do it. Also, you don't even have to put it on your resume if you really didn't like it, if you really don't want to, like you don't, you don't have to. 
a very, very, very important part of applying to this program were the essays. In addition to my personal statement, I did have to write about three supplemental essays. And in the supplemental essays, I included the topics of EMS and working as an ENT, how much it helped me with my communication and social skills and whatever. And I also talked about my why I want to be a doctor, my why medicine which is a very common question they like to ask at these interviews. Literally, your answer has to be as solid as possible because, oh, I want to be a doctor, maybe, I think. It's not going to cut. And my personal statement is actually the number one why medicine answer that I could have given to any college I applied to. Because in my personal statement, I talked about how the loss of a loved one inspired me to become a doctor and to do better so that nobody had to suffer what I went through. There were a couple little things apart from my extracurriculars, my grades, and all of that outside stuff that did help me in my application process. I remember being called in for the interview, and one of the first things they mentioned was that they do like diversity on their campus. They respect diversity. They wanted to make that an important part of their program. And relating to that, I am Brazilian. I was born in Brazil, raised there for the most part, and then I moved to the United States. I do think I had a bit of an advantage and that kind of goes for any college really that does want diversity I know some colleges don't really care but I think for the most part colleges do look for diversity in their student body so if you're an immigrant just know you have a little bit of an advantage and even if you're not an immigrant there's plenty of opportunity and there's plenty of other advantages that you also have so basically at my interview I also talked about how being an immigrant impacted me I had to deal with learning a new language moving to a different country that I had nothing I had no background on. And I also talked about the difference in healthcare in Brazil and here. That was also part of my personal statement. The reason why I lost a loved one and wanted to do something about it was because of the weak healthcare system in my home country at that moment in time. So really, you can talk about so many things. It's just that kind of really, that really worked out in my favor. So moving on to the BSMD application and the application process, it's a little bit more complex than your usual application process because for the most part, colleges just kind of want to see the common app application. But for the BSMD application, you have to do all these extra steps. So step one, you have to apply to the school's undergraduate program of choice through the common app or their website or whatever application you want to use. Step two is to apply separately to the school's BSMD application, which is normally like a whole separate website. You have to create a whole separate account and then you play the waiting game and you have to wait to see if you got accepted into that school's undergraduate program. And if you don't, if you don't, then you kind of just get disqualified from everything, but I think that most schools that have a BSMD are kind of easier to get into. It's not like they're like Ivy League. I do know that Case Western Reserve is one of those schools that is a little bit difficult to get into on its own without the program, so I think that that's a little bit of an exception, but schools like Drexel, VCU, University of Cincinnati, they all are pretty easy to get into. It's just the BSMD program is significantly more difficult. I wouldn't stress about getting into the undergraduate program, but keep an eye out on your email and your portal just to make sure that everything is smooth sailing. If you are accepted, then you just gotta wait to hear back from the BSMD regarding their interview. I don't know if all BSMDs do an interview, but mine did do an interview. And not everybody got called to the interview. I know that it's a select few that do make it to the interview. If you didn't make it to the interview, they'll probably deny you. Next step, you got invited to the interview portion, but now you can't slack. Like, just because you got accepted for the interview portion doesn't mean that you made it in. You have to attend the interview. If you don't attend the interview, just might as well just say goodbye to the whole thing because most of these colleges want to see you there. They want to see that you can make it. They want to see that you have it in you and you want to go to that school. They want to see commitment. So going to this interview, especially if it's in person, is crucial. For my interview, I practiced a lot. Like I did online mock interviews on YouTube. I practiced with friends, with teachers, with counselors. And it really did help, especially with nerves. Most of the time I was more nervous for the mock interviews that I did before than for the actual interview. After like the entire application process and an interview, really you're just waiting for them to respond. And this is the most painful part. I remember I was waiting for like a good like month or two. And my response came on the 2nd of April, which is pretty late if you've applied to college before. So I was stressing, but believe me, it'll be okay. And the interview process can be nerve-wracking. It's a chance for you to share your story and your passion for medicine. 
So be genuine, be prepared, be truthful, and be yourself. Because there's no other like you. And if you're not yourself, then you might not enjoy the experience after all. A couple extra things that I should mention that I think also helped me stand out is that, like I mentioned, I'm an immigrant and a first generation college student. If you're first gen, don't be afraid. You will stand out. And that's a good thing. I'm also fluent in Brazilian, Portuguese, and English. If you are bilingual or trilingual or a polyglot, don't forget to mention that on your resume and at your interview, wherever, wherever part of your application you want to mention it. It's always something that will make your application shine. Basically, that's how I got into med school at 18. If you guys have any questions or something you want me to elaborate on, please drop them in the comments because I could talk about this forever. And if you'd like me to do a whole video on college applications, also let me know down below because it's really helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. And actually, thank you to all my new subscribers. There's quite a few of you now. It's nothing crazy, but I actually do appreciate each and every single one of you, especially the ones of you that have supported me in the comments because I felt like I was talking to a ghost most of the time. But now I have a whopping 26 subscribers and I'm so happy that y'all are here. So subscribe for more awesome content with the mini microphone and I'll see you guys in the next video.